I'm Khaled Ziera. I'm uh, one of the interventional cardiologists at the uh, Heart and Vascular Institute. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, microvascular coronary artery disease, which is an area uh, uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, as we all uh, know, we have a uh, good number of uh, patients that we see with uh, either uh, angina or even sometimes myocardial infarctions. Uh, and have no uh, obstructive coronary disease or have mild uh, coronary artery disease when we take them to the cath lab and perform standard angiograms. Uh, this is now, uh, uh, has the name of ENOCA or uh, ischemia with no obstructive coronary arteries. And uh, ENOCA is becoming uh, a really uh, important uh, topic because uh, it is not rare and because we now have a little better understanding of how uh, that happens. Inoka can be caused by uh, microvascular dysfunction or can be caused by vasospastic disorders. Uh, microvascular dysfunction affects the small vessels that we can't see uh, on angiography because of their size, but uh, we can test for by uh, using uh, different tools in the cath lab. Uh, for example, measurement of coronary flow reserve or measurement uh, of uh, index of microcirculatory resistance, uh, measuring velocities of blood flow. Uh, for vasospastic disorders, we can uh, use uh, acetylcholine uh, challenges or acetylcholine injections into the coronary arteries to demonstrate the presence of uh, spasm and associated ECG changes with it or associated symptoms. So there are ways to test for microvascular dysfunction. There are ways to test for vasospastic disorders. Many of uh, these uh, tests are done in the cath lab, and we have the ability to make these diagnoses. Uh, this is important because a lot of our patients who have chest pain and don't have a large uh, vessel disease or epicardial uh, coronary artery disease uh, are dismissed and uh, considered to have chest pain caused by some other condition which in many cases is not true. Uh, it's just a different form of coronary disease that we need to address. Um, here at the clinic, we uh, are able to offer these tests uh, to patients uh, who have uh, either typical symptoms or objective evidence of ischemia, such as a positive stress test, or sometimes uh, even a, uh, a small myocardial infarction evidenced by uh, enzyme leaks. Uh, and then when we take them to the cath lab and find that their coronary angiograms do not reveal severe disease or obstructive lesions, we're able to perform uh, microvascular testing and vasospastic uh, uh, testing uh, at the same time. I think this is a very uh, significant portion of patients. In particular, uh, this is more common in women than men uh, and in those who have cardiovascular risk factors. And I think that there is good evidence now, uh, based on some of the more recent trials, to show that if we do these tests and if we guide our therapy on the basis of these results, we're able to actually relieve symptoms and improve quality of life. This is an area of interest uh, that uh, I have uh, uh, been working on for some time. Uh, we are developing our uh, program here at the clinic and engaging in uh, more than one uh, type of study. Uh, we are going to uh, be looking at the diagnostic tests, the different types of tools that are now available to us to uh, do these measurements and compare the different tests. We're also going to start thinking about using non-invasive tests to uh, identify this disease and uh, we're starting to think about specific therapies. Uh, we don't have specific therapies at this point, but there are a few on the horizon and they're undergoing clinical trials. And uh, we are happy to, be, to see those patients. Uh, sometimes we can enroll them in uh, these uh, new and upcoming studies, and sometimes we can offer them uh, clinical care as well.